Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick to the Comp video, we're going to be discussing all things AMD. There is an awful lot of stuff to get through. Specifically, we're going to be starting out with Vega and Raja Kodori telling us gamers, don't worry, you don't need to purchase the Vega Frontier Edition. There will be a gaming derivative coming soon. We're also going to be discussing, once again, a little bit more stuff on Vega's performance. And then we're going to be moving on to the CPU side of things and a few other bits and bobs besides. So, with all of that said, let's begin with a bit of a public service announcement. This is absolutely nothing to do with the video up ahead, but a couple of folks have actually pointed me to this as well, and I have shared it on the RGT Facebook, which is facebook.com slash redgamingtech. Feel free to follow it, slash nudge, nudge, nudge. Uh, if you go to a website by the name of Have I Been Pwned, that's with P-W-N-E-D, you could check out if one of your email accounts has been compromised in a data breach, which is kind of nice with all of the, uh, well, data breaches which is happening at the moment. As far as I'm aware, anyway, this website is 100% legit and looks to be pretty nice in terms of just checking. If it has been pwned and your email address has been leaked or whatever else then you could for belts and braces by all means just check change your password anyway for your email account and that's about it i don't have any affiliation to the website i'm just saying it as a psa Whew. right shall we begin i think that's a good plan so um we all know the well vega was kind of announced right we saw the new frontier edition and we were all bathing in its glory no, wait, we weren't all bloody bathing in its glory. I'll tell you why we weren't bathing in its bloody glory. Because we want to be able to play Doom, for God's sake. Don't worry, though. AMD have our back. The Radeon Vega Frontier Edition, and this is according to Raj Akadori on the Vega Frontier Edition blog, uh, edition graphics card is going to be uh, going to empower the pioneers creating the next generation of gaming experiences. But it does beg a question. Can you game on the Radeon Frontier Edition? The answer is yes, absolutely. But because this graphics card is optimised for professional use cases and priced accordingly, if gaming is your primary reason for buying a GPU, I suggest you wait a little bit longer, there's no actual date on a little bit, might I add, for the lower priced gaming optimised Radeon RX Vega uh, graphics cards, you'll be glad you did. I um, actually got a couple of questions for Rajar and that, and I don't think he'll answer me, but still, I'd love him to. Does that A mean, well, I guess the most obvious one is the price is going to be reduced quite a bit, and B, and perhaps more interesting for me, does that mean performance is going to be better because of optimization software, and does it also mean hardware is going to be perhaps higher clock speeds, and that type of thing? Very interested to know that. So... When is the card coming out? Well, unfortunately, we just don't know. I mean, Fury, the Fury series, is almost two years. It's looking, to be honest with you, and I'm going to be blunt here, like it's going to be Q3 for gaming versions of Vega, which is kind of crappy, to be honest. Um, and I don't necessarily know if it's AMD's fault. It's very easy to criticise AMD, but I don't necessarily think it is. I, I think a lot of it is down to HBM2. Um... I think that HBM2, the actual production, the manufacturing of HBM2 is just slower than what we originally anticipated. I mean, for the love of humanity, SK Helix were originally going to release this thing like Q2, Q3, 2016. In other words, it's almost a year ago, but it's just been pushed back for so long. And originally, we were going to be seeing speeds of up to 2 gigabits per second, but it's just not happening at the moment. And it's all supposedly down to yields and cost. And I do wonder... There is a part of me that does wonder if AMD might have just bitten slightly more off than it can chew with HBM2 for the customer derivatives. So perhaps they're not going to have all of the Vegas to be uh, HBM2. The only issue with that, and obviously I don't know what they've done in terms of the roadmaps internally, I can only make speculation and guesstimation, but perhaps not all of them have the same memory controller. Perhaps some of the boards are designed around GDDR5X or perhaps even GDDR6. And I would be more surprised if it's 6 I, because, once again, limited supply and production runs at the start. And also the fact that it's not really readily available yet, to say the least. So most likely GDDR5 or perhaps 5X will be um, quite sensible for certain Vegas. And I think even NVIDIA are going to be using GDDR5X or... Uh, Maybe even GDDR6. Can I just say R6 or R5X, please? Please? Anyway, um, yeah. I guess, really, you can't discuss Vega without the performance. 
Now, the website is up, that is the, you know, New Frontier blog and all that stuff, and we've had time to analyse the performance. There are a couple of alarm bells which do ring. Alarm bells is perhaps a bit of a strong word, but a few curiosities. Specifically, they have some benchmarks for Spec View Perf 12.1, which is uh, another application which is pretty popular, especially to test out the performance of graphics cards. And they have the three most obvious benches, KTF uh, 2, uh, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks. And they are testing it against the Radeon Vega Frontier Edition, which is in blue. And this is facing off against NVIDIA's Titan XP, which is really weird to me. Because, well, the Titan XP isn't configured exactly for the professional market which is very decide very weird like the reason that they didn't put it up against the quadro card i'm not quite sure i have put in a couple of quadro related uh benchmarks you can check out now this doesn't necessarily mean anything because honestly it's so early at the moment we don't know the position of the software it's just a bit weird that amd have decided to do that but ultimately a quadro P6000, for example, has essentially the same specifications as a Titan XP, but the difference is it's geared towards the professional market. Therefore, obviously, it's much more expensive, the software is different, the GPU is a bit different, the drivers have been optimised, so it's probable that AMD simply have not actually optimised their drivers at the moment, and therefore things are still a bit rusty. And you could kind of get a sense of that from what Rajak had already said on stage, that basically they're still optimising things, they're still trying to tweak things, and at the moment they're just glad to at least be uh, showing numbers. So it's just a bit weird, and hopefully some of this stuff gets clarified, and honestly the performance numbers of Vega, upon, and I refer to the graphics performance here for you know gaming, not for professional computer or any of that jazz, it's just really up in the air. I do feel it's going to be faster than Pascal, simply because, but how much faster, that remains to be seen, and quite frankly at this point, I think a lot of folks are just getting a little sick of the weight, um, and it's kind of weird, because like, if... NVIDIA were really smart. They could be very aggressive with their pricing right now. Cut down the price a little bit more for the 1080s and the 1070s especially. And they might actually get some sales figures and mop some sales figures up. So even if AMD came in and been, and let's say they were 25% faster, people are not going to be pissed if they picked up a discounted GTX 1070 or 1080. Now this is not to criticize AMD. Once again, I'm not really for or against either company. I just kind of want the products out at the moment. I hope for AMD's sake, however, that we're going to see at least a several months gap between the RX Vegas and the, you know, the GTX 2000 series or whatever aimed, uh, NVIDIA end up going to be calling their damn uh, customer-facing line of uh, GeForce graphics cards. Because obviously, if Falter is quite a bit faster than um, <clears throat> Vega, it's going to look a bit weird uh, in the eyes of the customers. But either way, ultimately... It is what it is. Uh, both companies um, essentially are going to be fighting for your money. And as I always say, whether it's AMD, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's MSI, whether it's Asus, whether it's you know Intel, just choose the product which is best for you, has the best specifications for your money and the best build quality. And if they're identical, you know, if everything else is identical and the software, you, you know, you don't like one more than the other, then really it just comes down to which company you prefer more. But I will always rather you spend your money on a company which you feel offers the best performance for the dollar. Uh, and there you go. Anyway, there are lots of other AMD-related stuffs to discuss. And I figure we can start out with some Ryzen 3 details, specifically the 1200. Yes, I admit the Ryzen 3 is not exactly the CPU that everyone has the, you know the uh, the desire to own. Most people want the Ryzen 5s or Ryzen 7s, but the Ryzen 3s do have some cool stuff. The Ryzen 3 1200, from what we can understand, is going to be a quad-core SKU with 8 megabytes of level 3 cache, and the CPU has recently been spotted in Asus ROG's Crosshair 6 uh, Hero Wi-Fi AC motherboard. CPU support this. God, that is a long thing to say. Um... And from what we could see, it's going to have just a 3.1 gigahertz base and 65 watts a TDP, which is very low. It's a, the low end of like even the Ryzen 5s. The early part of the rumors, however, tell us that it lacks SMT. Therefore, we're only going to get just simple four threads, nothing else. 
Of course, what the performance levels for the CPU are going to be remain a mystery. But honestly, the problem I have with this processor, much the same issue I have with many of the Ryzen 3s, is that, quite honestly, you're left with this position where just a few dollars more, and yes, well, I'm not talking about the movie for once, can buy you an awful lot of extra performance. Even the recently review, uh, released excuse me, Ryzen 5 1400 is coming in at around 150, 160 Great British Pounds, or around 170 US dollars. This is excluding tax or inclusive tax, depending on whether you're living in the US or UK, respectively. That's not bad in terms of money. The problem is, like, you could then go to a 1600, which is just going to cost, um, you know, maybe about 30, 40 pounds more. Obviously, it does depend heavily upon the retail you're getting it from on all that stuff. And then you're going from 4 cores, 8 threads, up to 6 cores, 12 threads, which is an awful lot of additional performance. Hell, even the Ryzen 5 1500X only costs like $20 more, £20 more, excuse me, or $20 more. So it like that market segment is really, really tight, and in my opinion, I'd always rather spend that extra little bit of uh, cash. Anyway, the final thing I'd like to discuss from... Uh, AMD, and it's not really surprising to anyone, but they have finally told us that they will indeed be holding their Computex press conference on May 31st in Westin, Depay, and this is going to be held at 10 a.m. Um, their time. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to read out their press quote verbatim. At Computex 2017, AMD would like to invite you to our press conference starting at 10 a.m. May 31st at West End to Pi to hear AMD President and CEO Dr. Lisa Su and other AM senior AMD business leaders share information on the latest set of high-performance AMD products and technologies from PC, immersive devices, and data centers. The past year has seen AMD bring innovation and competition back to the high-performance desktop market with the release of Ryzen processors and further strengthening its consumer and professional graphics market with the Ryzen 5, sorry, Ryzen RX 500 series GPUs designed to enable optimal experiences in modern games and smooth VR experiences, and we have so much planned for 2017. By the way, this is very likely to be the date that we learn a lot more stuff about, of course, the new uh, platform from AMD as well. Uh, they're also looking to perhaps show some more epic stuff, and I am very hopeful, but not exactly... Uh, guaranteeing that we're finally going to learn more release details of the RX Vegas. Please. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's not been exactly super duper informative, I think. It's raised a lot more questions for me anyway regarding the performance of this damn Vega card. But uh, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.